Hello and welcome to GM Service Know-How. I'm Linda Keyrose. The purpose of this video is to familiarize technicians with certain radiator cap and cooling system contamination issues that have been observed on specific model vehicles and provide recommendations on the most effective repairs. In order to compile the information that led to the making of this video, General Motors and Texaco engineers inspected several thousand two-, three-, and four-year-old off-lease vehicles. Their findings provide the foundation for this video. General Motors made DexCool Extended Life Coolant standard equipment in all North American built vehicles except Saturn, beginning in the 1996 model year. Some assembly plants made the conversion over the 1995 Memorial Day shutdown, and all remaining plants were converted for the 1996 model startup. For the post-Memorial Day built 1995 models filled with DexCool and all 1996 models, the coolant maintenance change interval is 5 years or 100,000 miles, whichever occurs first. In 1997, that interval was increased to 5 years or 150,000 miles, whichever occurs first, which is where it remains today. Based on first-hand inspection, the vast majority of all GM vehicles built with DexCool are continuing to operate without problems and will easily achieve their 5-year 100,000 mile or 5-year 150,000 mile maintenance change interval. There are certain models, however, where contamination has been observed on both the radiator cap and in the cooling system. Laboratory analysis has confirmed that although it may appear similar looking, the actual contaminant is very different from model to model. And for that reason, each individual model will have a recommended repair that is specific to it. There is one characteristic, however, that is shared by all the vehicles that were observed with cooling system contamination. They all showed evidence of having been operated for an extended period of time with a low level of coolant in the radiator. This observation was further confirmed by the absence of cooling system contamination on like model fleet vehicles where maintenance was a priority. A common characteristic on all the fleet vehicles we looked at was that not only was the cooling system routinely inspected and kept full, all coolant recovery bottles were actually overfilled to slightly above the hot mark when cold. This provided an extra margin of coolant that would further assure the radiator didn't run low. Next, let's take a look at the mechanical aspects of what happens when a cooling system is operating while it's low on coolant. Today's cooling systems are designed to operate with the radiator and coolant recovery bottles at full. When that's not the case, a number of undesirable consequences can occur. When a radiator is low on coolant, an air pocket is created at the top of the radiator that provides a beachhead where cooling system contaminants can deposit. This occurs much like sand is deposited by waves on the beach. In cooling systems that utilize a drop center cap and non-pressurized coolant recovery bottles, like this one, these contaminants can deposit in the valve mechanism of the radiator cap. Once the cap becomes contaminated and ceases to function as designed, the chances are the system will begin to lose additional coolant more rapidly. This is because once the radiator cap fails to hold pressure, a 50-50 mix of coolant and water will boil at 226 degrees Fahrenheit instead of 265 degrees Fahrenheit at 15 PSI. By boiling at a lower temperature, it's much easier to exhaust the capacity of the coolant recovery bottle as the coolant expands through the failed cap at the lower temperature. When the system cools off, less coolant will then be available to be drawn back into the radiator. After several cycles under these conditions, the level of coolant in the radiator can be significantly reduced and the coolant recovery bottle will be empty. It is for this reason that the condition and functional ability of the radiator cap is so important. Always test the functional performance of any radiator cap whenever cooling system performance is in question, and replace any cap that does not hold the specified pressure. 
As we mentioned earlier, there are only a few models where the system design appears sensitive to this type of malfunction. Although when inspecting radiator caps, the contaminant may appear to be similar looking, different models have different recommended repairs. That's because the makeup of the contaminant is usually unique to a specific model or engine family. Therefore, each model should be carefully evaluated to assure the appropriate repair is being applied. Now let's look at those individual models where you may see contamination and talk about the recommended repairs for each. First, let's look at ST utilities, such as Chevrolet Blazers, GMC Envoys and Jimmys, Olds Bravadas, and ST pickups, equipped with 4.3 liter V6 engines. Bulletin 9906020012B outlines the most effective repair for these models. The contaminant has been identified as iron oxide and the cleaning material recommended in the bulletin was selected because it was proven to be the most effective at cleaning this type of contaminant. It is very important to follow the steps outlined in the bulletin precisely. Cases where the procedure was not effective have almost always been traced to instances where either another cleaning material was substituted or the procedure was not strictly adhered to. The most common mistakes have been running the flush while the engine operating temperature is too low. Heat acts as a catalyst in this procedure, and if the temperature of the system is not maintained according to the bulletin specifications, the cleaning will not be effective. Another common mistake is failing to correctly assess the level of contaminants in the radiator prior to beginning. As stated in the bulletin, it's important to determine if coolant is able to flow through the third row down from the top of the radiator. If not, the radiator core must be replaced prior to the flush procedure. This is because the cleaner must be able to flow past the contamination in order to clean it. In cases where the system can't achieve sufficient flow around the contaminants, the cleaner cannot be effective. Next, let's look at W cars, such as Chevrolet Lumina Monte Carlo, Buick Century, and Pontiac Grand Prix, and U vans, such as Chevrolet Venture, Pontiac Transport Montana, and Old Silhouette, equipped with 3.1 liter and 3.4 liter V6 engines. Bulletin 00060204 describes the appropriate repair procedure for the issues most often seen on these models. Although similar in appearance to the ST issue, the material that is seen on the radiator caps of these models contains no iron oxide. It is much more gelatin-like in texture and is usually comprised of sealer pellet residue, hose material, and or other contaminants. It is very rare to see cases where the contamination evidenced on these radiator caps has spread beyond the radiator neck. If contamination is suspected beyond the radiator neck, the technician may choose to remove the radiator end tanks for further inspection. Replacement of the radiator cap, wiping out the radiator neck, and topping off the system is all that is normally recommended for these models. Unless other symptoms are present, it is not necessary to flush the cooling system or replace the coolant on these models prior to their published maintenance change interval. Now a word on 2000 Buick LeSabres and Pontiac Bonnevilles, equipped with 3.8 liter V6 engines. Complaints on these models typically center around what is perceived as discolored coolant, usually dark and rust colored in appearance and a ring of contamination material around the inside of the coolant recovery bottle. Analysis has determined both of these to consist of excess sealer pellet material that was inadvertently installed at the assembly plant. Sealer pellet installation has been discontinued on these models. Cleaning the coolant recovery bottle, topping up the system and checking the radiator cap for proper function is all that is required on 2000 model Buick LeSabres and Pontiac Bonnevilles. Finally, let's take a look at some common facts that apply to all the models we've talked about today. As stated in Bulletin 9906020112B, 
The radiator cap is not a good indicator of the general condition of the cooling system. Typically, the underside of the radiator cap will exhibit a greater amount of contamination than the rest of the system. This is due to the beach effect described earlier. The color of the coolant is also not a good indicator of its general condition. Due to fading of the dyes used with DexCool, the coolant in some vehicles may appear pink after a time. Likewise, the addition of sealer pellet material can turn the coolant appearance to dark red or maroon. As a rule, color alone is not an indication of the quality level of the coolant and does not affect its performance. It's important to carefully evaluate both the model type and the severity of the contamination in order to proceed with the most appropriate and effective repair. When performing repairs for the aforementioned ST trucks, U-vans, and W cars, an extra measure of assurance can be achieved by replacing the standard radiator cap with a stamp model 10230 radiator cap or 11230 radiator cap. These caps are of a spring center design that is less sensitive to the effects of low coolant contamination. You should also top off the radiator and fill the coolant recovery bottle to the hot mark when cold. These measures will combine to provide an additional measure of assurance against the vehicle operating with the cooling system low on coolant. Always wipe off the radiator sealing surfaces to assure a good seal before installing or reinstalling any radiator cap. Inform the customer to check the level of the coolant recovery bottle regularly and to maintain it at the proper level by adding a 50-50 mix of DexCool and water whenever it's found to be low. Let's summarize. DexCool continues to perform extremely well in the majority of GM vehicles and has provided us with a competitive performance and environmental advantage for several years. There are over 20 million GM vehicles on the road today that are equipped with DexCool, and the vast majority of them will not require a coolant change until their regularly scheduled 5-year 100,000 mile or 5-year 150,000 mile change interval is achieved. Although a small percentage of the models we've discussed can exhibit coolant contamination, the most effective method of preventing or eliminating any risk of contaminants is to always maintain the cooling system, including recovery bottle, at their full level.